another work from home dad's special edition. Super excited to be sitting here with Angela Fisher. Hey Angela, how are you? Here, I'm great, how are you? I am fantastic indeed. This feels so familiar to me. I don't know <laughs> if you have that or not. I'll get into that in a little bit. Angela is with Community Commerce, which is this really awesome community-centered, revenue-generating marketplace. And she's going to explain what that means, why you care, and most importantly, we're going to talk a little bit about how we think we can revitalize some of that Motor City Connect magic with this. And I'm excited about that. So, revenue-generating marketplace, community-centered, those are all exciting things. What does that mean? Sure. That means taking what your community has and finding new ways to make it work better for them. All, that's all we do. We look at the assets you've got, what, what the particular needs are of your community, what the gaps might be, and we can try to help you find creative ways to make those things meet. Okay, cool. So you probably have some different definitions of communities or different types of communities that serves. Sure. Uh, you could have a small business networking group like yours. You could have um, a business incubator or startup group that gets entrepreneurs together and helps them to really grow and become real businesses or become better businesses, excuse me. The uh, hyper-local hyper community group, like a chamber or a DDA, DDA, would be a good example of that. Okay. Uh, and also, we can work with nonprofits as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the small business networking group. Motor City Connect really kind of hit its niche in the small business, one to ten person companies. It's the majority of the membership. How would an organization like ours find value? When, when the goal is to try and get more commerce between the members, more business, just more interactions, how do we do that? Sure. Uh, well, we would increase the amount of business. We help you to increase the amount of business that's done, not just referrals, but actual business that passes between your members. And um, the way we have a lot of different ways of handling that, but uh, we, we would uh, encourage you to use things like trade or barter. We'd encourage you to use cash. We'd encourage you to use alternative currencies and any combination thereof, depending on what your group decides is the prime balance for your group. And uh, we also have a component that for people that don't want to participate in that or aren't able to, we have a component of a uh, pay it forward type reward system where we um, let, them let, let them participate by getting actual cash rewards from your members that are participating in our system. Very, very cool. So let me try and say it a little differently. Let's assume you're a website developer who's got a couple of people on staff but aren't always busy, and there's a CPA who it's July, they're not as busy as they are in the first part of the year, and there's a sign making company. The CPA needs a new website, goes to the website developer, finds out it's $1,500, but doesn't really want to spend the $1,500 because their income's a little lower in July. They can put up community points and cash and get the website developed, and let's say the website developer does this work, agrees to it, is excited about it, gets the cash to pay their staff, gets the points to use, because they need a brand new sign to hang up over their business so people can see them. So they can use those community points and some cash or whatever combination or Bitcoin to actually pay the sign company. Right. And that's kind of how that works, right? Yes. So you're getting more products or services and opportunities to get them while keeping some of your hard-earned cash on hand and giving back to the community by utilizing these points. Sure. What, yeah. what other places can use the points or can put points on? Uh, well, it would be any members. That okay. Anyone that belongs to the system could do that. If, if you, you have to become a member and you go through a peer review, peer review process with us, every member, um, you decide on what majority rule that is, but they have to be approved before they become a member. And that increases the no like trust factor. You're dealing with people that you agree you want to work with. You're not having someone forced on you that you have no idea of not only the quality of their work, but um, how well they follow up on what they say they're going to do. This is a very good no like trust mechanism where you deal exclusively with people that you want to. So we would open this up to all of Motor City Connect. Just select members, and then maybe they would refer additional members, and it would grow kind of by word of mouth. Uh, word of mouth and by need. That's where the um, assets versus needs versus uh, the, the gap analysis comes in. Okay. You have to decide what you have as a community, whether that's assets or whether it's gifts of the hand, head, or heart that you bring to the table, and uh, what the needs are 
for that community. And if those two things don't match up, that's where you might start identifying members that you want to add in. I love gifts of the hand, head, and heart. Now, I made reference to the fact that this feels familiar. This is actually the third time we filmed this because of my error twice. But they were new and unique and improved each time. Um, that's the first time I've heard that. So that's the, where the magic happens, right? right. Third time's a charm. What up? All right, so you talked a little bit about Business Incubator. Does it, it, it runs similarly for them. Sure. But there's some added benefit for a Business Incubator. Right, one of the things that I find particularly intriguing um, for me, and hopefully there will be incubators that feel the same way, you have members that they graduate and become independent businesses and maybe you've got someone that has a restaurant, for example, and you just brought in someone that um, does cupcakes. If they need a space where they're going to be able to bake, they're going, they may not have an actual brick and mortar yet, but that restaurant is still a member. They, they came through your community and they kept their membership when they left. And what they do is they pay it forward, or they pay it back to that business incubator by opening up their space at the time that they don't use it for that cupcake person to use a space that is licensed by the state of Michigan and covers all of the health codes that they need. Um, you know, other firms could do the same thing, maybe shared spaces or, you know, just whatever opportunity presents. And that's why the needs analysis is so important, doing the, figuring out what you've got and what you bring to the table versus what is needed by that. We're in this really cool space owned by SeaTech Solutions right on Woodward in Ferndale with Ryan Murray sitting right over here working on computers doing his work. So Ryan technically, if he was a member, could put this space up for community points, right? I mean, as a thing, not that he's going to, but right. that's an yeah, example. Not that he's going to, but that's an example, or even a portion of it. Okay, you know, right. You could do some with trade and some with, without. Right. And I know we don't love using the word trade, but that's a word that people understand. Community commerce. Community commerce. Because it encompasses more than trade. I mean, you're talking about, that's where the gifts of the hand and the heart come in. That's still trade, but it's stuff that is intrinsic to a person, and that's the important part for me. That's the stuff that you just know that you can do, and it's just a part of who you are. And um, trade is a small, is a component of it for sure. So are things like hours, you know, hour sharing, um, things like uh, the alternative currencies, anything like that. It's more a question of finding out what the problem is and what you've got available. And once you match up those two things, that's what that's when the magic happens. That's when the magic happens, and that makes perfect sense. We mentioned Chambers of Commerce and, and Downtown Development Associations, or DDA, as you use the uh, phrase so eloquently. Similar kind of deal, right? Yeah. But it's more hyper local. Right, it, it is. And what, what we can help with for those type of communities, uh, cross, function, or cross business promotion, for example, if you've got a big box store that comes in to the community, and uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, most people want to shop locally, but there's a sale. There's, a, there's some sort of something that's going to draw you into the big box. And it's, that can be hard to fight sometimes, but being a smaller business, uh, we can help to provide opportunities within that community for people to not only business to business do work, but also bringing the community in through the reward system where they want to, they're actually rewarded with cash to, to shop at those businesses. And it costs nothing, it costs nothing for them to use it. And the businesses don't actually have to pay out any cash to participate. That makes perfect sense. So, from my perspective, for Motor City Connect, how many people do you think we'd need? How many businesses would we start? 15, 30, something um, in there? Yeah, I think you could start with that. It's a more a question of what the businesses are and what the problems they can solve for each other. Okay. Um, so, there has to be some sort of, you know, common sense overlap, need assessment, right. where they can solve each other's challenges, right. or at least be close to solving them. Sure. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. Can you help each other? Um, if it's a room full of people that don't have any good synergy together and have no common purpose or no common problem, it's just not going to work well. Okay, so we shouldn't get the auto mechanic and the parrot manufacturer. Yeah. But maybe they want a parrot. I don't, maybe they don't know what's going on. <laughs> maybe the parrot guy's truck breaks down all the time. We don't know. make assumptions. You don't yeah, know what's going on. <laughs> you know, true that is. Love that. It's the third agreement by Don Miguel West. Don't make assumptions. Have you read that book? I have not. But the four agreements, okay. highly recommend. It. Okay, so I think if you're interested and have a business and are part of Motor City Connect and want to learn more, I think we should put on a webinar or a seminar or a class or a meet and greet or a hosted something. And maybe Ryan would be nice enough to allow us to do it here. Who knows? 
for a middle school. People like from down, they know where it is. So and we'll, there's parking in the back. And there's for parking. Free. free parking in Ferndale. Sorry, Liz. Let's ask the question. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> so if you're interested, comment on this video and let us know, and we'll figure out a time and we'll make it happen from there. In the meantime, if you're not in Motor City Connect and you see this and you're interested and you're a in a community already, one of the ones we've mentioned, or with a nonprofit or something else that might have a group of people that are interested in sharing some resources and giving gifts of the head, hands, and heart of that. How do they reach you? Well, they can call me at 248-876-4471. You can email me, Angela at ace-c3.com. So that's Angela at ace-c3.com. Or you can visit our website, which is aceC3.com. So pretty simple, aceC3.com. I, I know I've said this before, but I'm still flabbergasted that you have a five letter domain and you just got it this year. That can't, doesn't even seem like a thing. So perfect, Angela. Thank you for your patience. I think we got this right. I think we got it right the last time and the time before. But I'm going to make sure that we get it right and put it on the web this time. So I own that. Um, normally okay with this stuff. But I'm excited that we had the opportunity to have this conversation because I really liked it. I think we did better. All right. This is us, work from home dads. Here's my daughter sitting over there, super excited. And uh, we thank you very much for paying attention.